In this video, we're going to go over the user interface of Figma. So you're going to learn about what all of this means, what's the purpose of all these buttons and controls, and kind of hopefully this will break down the first and oftentimes the biggest barrier of entry when you're trying to learn a new program, which is learning where to click, basically. And also, I feel like it's good to mention that this video is a part of the Figma Basics series, which is a series of videos, a playlist where you can learn about the very basic topics of Figma. So if you are a beginner with Figma, uh, definitely go and check out my channel. The link to the playlist should be on the screen right now and in the description below. Now let's have a look at the Figma interface. Uh, why don't we start with the biggest, most prominent gray bar at the very top. So this this is where you have your basic window controls. Of course, this depends on what system you're using. Uh, if you're on a Mac, it's on, on the left side. And I assume that if you're on a Windows, this will be probably over here. These individual tabs, these are your files. So you can see that I currently have three files opened in this within this Figma window. You can, of course, have multiple Figma windows. The principle is the same, for example, as for example, with any internet browsers. And also there is, there is a file history. So if you click these three dots, you will see the latest, most recent files you worked on. And now here we have the file name. So the, this file is called Mavi Design. And the project name. Files can be sorted into projects. Basically, this project is called Mavi Design YouTube and the file is called Mavi Design. If we double click uh, here, we can change the name of the file. We don't want to do that, but we can. And also you, when you click this little arrow, you get like uh, multiple options what to do with this file. You can see the version history. You can, you can launch the export window and also we can do various stuff like duplicating, renaming, moving into a different project, you know, starring, favoriting this file or removing this file altogether. Then you have your profile here, uh, the, green, the green circle. This headphone icon, that means uh, this is a feature for when you're working within a team, you can actually start, uh, if my understanding is correct, like a chat room of sorts where you can discuss the design live as you're working on it with your peers, with your uh, colleagues. And then there is also um, the share window and the link button, which basically fulfills a similar purpose. When you click on this, your link to this page and we will go over pages later. The link to this page and this file will be copy, copied to your uh, clipboard. And you also get a button that will launch uh, the prototype if you, if you build one. Also, I talk about building and launching prototypes in one of my other videos from the Figma Basics series. So if you'd like to check that out, you can. Here you have the zoom option where you can basically change the size or change the zoom of what you're looking at. So right now we are at 248%. We can go to real size and, you know, this probably feels very familiar from other programs, other software. You also have a pixel preview and other things that you can show or hide when working with, with a file. And then finally, in terms of this gray bar, we have tools and the menu. So here you have the main menu where you can basically find uh, all the features. Again, I'm not gonna go through all of them. And if we just quickly go over these tools, you have the move tool, uh, which is basically used to select items and move them around. You can also, uh, where there is a little arrow, the tool serves as kind of a menu for other similar tools. So you can, for example, select the scale tool and when you do that, you can select an item and you can see we have this little double arrow and with this you can scale things up and down. You might be asking what's the difference, how, how is that different to the move tool? And if you're using the move tool and you're gonna you know, change the size of, of frames, there are certain rules. There can be certain rules in the frames. For example, we specified that these arrows are, you know, kind of can, kind of stick to this corner. So that's being respected with this tool uh, and the sizes remain. But if you decide to use the scale tool and you then, you know, do a similar thing, everything is just 
being scaled up or down. So notice how it behaves differently. When I use the scale tool, this happens, whereas when I use the move tool, this happens, right? So it's similar, but there are some key differences. Next, we have the frame tool, um, not surprisingly being used to create frames. And if you want to learn more about frames and groups, I did a video on that as well. So feel free to go check it out. And then we have the slice tool that I'm going to admit I don't use very often, but I assume this is good for when you want to kind of specify parts of the of the file that you, for example, want to export. Uh, so let's say that you'd want, want to you know, select this part of the file and then you maybe want to export that. You can, you know, do, do that. So you can see that if we move the slice around and if we kind of see the preview of the final exported result, you can see that if we move that, we can kind of focus on different areas of uh, the file and export those areas. Then we have the shape tools uh, where you can create individual shapes. So a rectangle, for example, again, you can individual shapes. We have a line, arrow, ellipse, and so on. We also have the pen tool where you can create, also create shapes. Uh, so this is kind of where the basics of your designs will be born. You can also create a new text field. You can search through components that you created within the file and also plugins and widgets. Then we have the hand tool that is being used when you want to kind of grab the canvas and move around. It's also possible to access this tool when you have the selection tool, the move tool selected by pressing V and then you press space bar and you hold space bar press down and you then click and drag to access a similar function as the hand tool. You can also select this tool to add comments and uh, you can then read other people's comments and kind of that's very useful when you want to send your designs for feedback. Let's now focus on this area, this light area of the interface and specifically this left bar. So whenever you create a new object, let's say a text tool, uh, a text field. This is a text, this is a text. You can see that it's being reflected in on this list. So th these are layers. These are layers and whenever you create a new one, a new object will appear here and you can then select these and you can see that if you click on these objects, it highlights. You can also lock the object, which means that you cannot move it, you cannot select it or you can hide it which means it disappears from this area, but it's still here. So that's just in terms of visibility. We also have the frame number one and the frame called interface within which you can find the interface, you know, this group as well as these four arrows. So those are layers. That's where, that's basically a list of all the objects you have on your canvas, which is this area. This area is called the canvas or the page or, um, basically just the visual representation of your design. That's basically what you're creating appears here. And we also have the rulers, which represent the position of objects on the canvas. You can see that if I select this one, these numbers here show uh, X and Y coordinates of this object, where it ends, where it begins. And if we, for example, want to move this item to the right, we can you know, increase the X coordinates and if we want to move it up and down we can modify the y coordinates um, which leads us to this this area this right area and that's where you get like options to modify your object so this area will be changing a lot depending on what type of object you select if you for example select an arrow you get slightly different controls than when you get than when you um, select a text field and that's because, for example, you have things like font size and alignment that's, that obviously doesn't make any sense for a simple arrow. So this is going to change depending on what object you currently have selected. And if there is no object selected, you basically get only the option to set the background of the project of the file and then export things. You can also see that this panel and this panel right here, they both have these headlines. So these are kind of also work like tabs, which kind of changes the mode of this left or right panel. 
So if we use components, components can be found in the assets panel. So let's create, let's, let's say that we want to create a component that's like, um, I don't know, a red, a red rectangle. So that's, that's a component now. In the layers panel, you have the component as well as the component instance. In the assets panel, you get the, um, you get just the main component. The cool thing about this is that you can search through these assets. So when I type in rectangle, rectangle, it will kind of search for all the components that fulfill uh, this criteria that have the word rectangle in their name. <clears throat> so that's really that's really cool. And also you can switch pages. So each each Figma file has pages. So I have currently three pages within this file. And this means that I can, you know, have multiple files within one file, basically. This is a fairly familiar concept from other apps as well. So if you if I then click to UI, I get different elements that that I work worked on previously. You know, I can just it's just so that you can organize your projects, your files uh, better. Um, so this is where you kind of switch through pages and where you create new pages. You can see that within this project, Mavi Design YouTube, I'm using a free license uh, and I cannot create more than three uh, pages, which is okay since I don't need more of those. But if you're working on a project that has, you know, very complex designs, you probably want to use the paid version. So a subscription is tied to an individual project. So if you have like a huge, huge project, it's definitely then better to pay for the, pay for the subscription that allows you to create more than just three pages. And then we get this design prototype inspect tabs where I, I described this already. So this is where you kind of get the controls for individual elements this will change a lot and then a prototyping um, so that's when you actually start when you want to build your prototype that's where you specify you know um, the functions of individual elements what goes where what leads to what what happens and all these dependencies when building prototypes um, this doesn't change this layout doesn't really change it just changes based on what interactions you specify right so you get multiple when you click on an object you can see the interactions and starting points tied to a specific object and then you get the inspect tab which is basically when you're handing over the the project to developers they can select an object and then go through all these specifications that is useful for building apps for building websites so they can easily find out for example the css code that is that defines specific object. So for example, when you have a text object, you can then examine CSS properties like font family, font style. This is basically for web developers and for app developers. So you as a designer, you probably won't use this very often, but it's good to know what, what this is for and what your developers and your colleagues will be looking for when they will work with your designs, with your final product. Then we also get this help and resources button where you can click and access materials and resources for learning Figma. You also get this really cool keyboard shortcuts panel that will show you all the shortcuts that are available within Figma and it also highlights the ones that you have already used. So this is very, I found this very, very useful and it's also, I do recommend going through this and learning these if you want to learn, want to really get efficient with, uh, with Figma. And it's, it's just a great tool to speed up your workflow. So you can find that here in the top right, uh, bottom right, sorry, bottom right corner under keyboard shortcuts. And that's it. That's the interface of Figma. I hope this video cleared up the majority of uncertainty and maybe confusion about the Figma interface. It's really intuitive and uh, simple. I think once you get used to, to all these features, all, all this layout. And uh, if you have any questions about the interface, if there is 
maybe anything unclear from this video, definitely let me know in the comments below. And also, if you want to learn more about Figma, about the basics of Figma, definitely go and check out my playlist and um, also my channel in general if, if Figma and design software is something you're interested in. Thanks for watching all the way to the very end. If you found this video useful, please leave a like and subscribe for more tutorials and videos on digital design. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.